Watching Alabama's WVUA News at 10 with your award-winning news team. John Huddleston, weather with Richard Scott, and sports with Gary Harris. Tonight, law enforcement in Montgomery move in on a house that they believe Desmonte Leonard is in. He is the man accused of killing three people, two of which were former Auburn football players. We'll have much more on this big story coming up. But first, good evening and thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll get to that story in just a moment, but first we begin with the weather this evening. Around 7 o'clock, the rain and strong storms came through Tuscaloosa, leaving down power lines and trees throughout our area. Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott, Richard Scott starts us off tonight. And Richard, I'm hearing at this hour things have kind of died down a little bit. Yeah, John, much better than used at this 10 o'clock hour. In fact, on this Monday evening, shower storms all happening mainly south of us, still down over Marengo County, a little light to moderate rain over Hale County, Perry County, and Bibb and Chilton County. But the severe weather activity now to our south, south of our coverage area, uh, heading right for the state capital right now. And you still see those severe thunderstorm warnings ahead of that batch of storms, but it is clearing up back to the northwest. And here's that complex storms that moved in from the northwest earlier today and produce lots of widespread wind damage, uh, mainly tree and power line damage across the area. But as this complex raced on along, it laid down nice rain totals. That is something we certainly needed the good rain out there. And hey, the rain's not over with. More thunderstorms going to be possible, I think, at about any point on Tuesday. And nothing overly severe, but a stray severe storm or two is also possible. I think temperatures top out probably those upper 80s tomorrow. Much like today, though, there's a risk of a couple of strong, severe storms. What about the rest of the forecast and your weekend forecast? Weather is coming up. All right, Richard, thank you. One of the hardest hit areas was in the northern part of Tuscaloosa County tonight. WVA's Lindsay Price filed this report from Northport. I'm out here in Northport at the intersection of Dove Creek Avenue and Fall Creek Place where witnesses say they have seen this tree in the power line spark several times. Now the Northport Fire Department was out here earlier monitoring the situation and they have came back to check it out again along with Alabama Power and witnesses tell us that when they heard it, it almost sounded like an explosion. Now you were out here when the situation happened and you said that it almost sounded like an explosion. What were you seeing and hearing when this was happening? Uh, big blue flames, sparks, um, really, really loud noise, and it was pretty scary. And I know that you guys called 911 to come back out here. And how many times have you seen it spark since that time that you've seen it the first time? Uh, twice. Okay, and Northport Fire Department is out here still, and they continue to monitor the situation. And we'll, of course, bring you reports as they become available. In Northport, Lindsey Price, WVUA News. Lindsay, thank you very much. Northport was not the only area affected. This was the scene around the University of Alabama tonight. Traffic lights out, down limbs also. The last update we had from Alabama Power was that there were 40,355 customers without power in Tuscaloosa and the Western Division statewide. 122,316 customers remain in the dark. Of course, our area got the brunt of the storms tonight. Over the weekend, though, portions of coastal Alabama were hit hard, up to 22 inches of rain in some spots. A state of emergency was declared in the city of Bay Munette earlier today. It was eventually lifted, but you can see the floodwaters are not in a rush to move on. Emergency crews spent part of the day rescuing people from their homes over in Gulf Shores. It wasn't just the rain that wreaked havoc. A 10-year-old boy was hospitalized this morning after he was struck by lightning. Now to our other big story of the night. As we mentioned a moment ago, police have surrounded a house that they think Desmonte Leonard is in. He is the man accused of killing three people over the weekend, two of which were former Auburn football players. The mayor of Montgomery tonight said authorities received two separate tips that someone who looked like Leonard was in the area. Dozens of law enforcement vehicles surrounded this house. They used two rounds of tear gas, but as we said, a man they believe to be Leonard is still in the house at this hour. Obviously, uh, darkness is not necessarily on our side in this situation because um, we know where that individual is. Uh, we've got the, the house uh, surrounded. Uh, we've got uh, dogs deployed. And so from that standpoint, darkness is not necessarily uh, going to be our enemy. Uh, if we have to get illumination up there, we will get illumination up there. Um, but uh, just from a standpoint of if it rains, then we just have to put on our slickers and you do likewise. <laughs> Leonard is charged with three counts of capital murder. Now, of course, when a tragedy like this occurs, rivalries take a back seat. Tonight, WVA's Travis Leader spoke to University of Alabama students and parents who are offering support to the Auburn family. 
The capstone is speaking out about this weekend shooting in Auburn. The University of Alabama system offered these comments. Our thoughts and prayers are with our friends in Auburn during this very difficult time in the aftermath of their tragedy. The Auburn family has always stood tall for us and we do the same for them. Students and parents at the university's summer orientation expressed shock after the news broke. As a mother, you know, I just, and then Caroline fixing to head down here, I thought, oh my, you know, that could be her, that could be anybody. They've talked about orientation, you know, just like safety precautions to take while they gave you a booklet of things to take precautions of whenever you're going to be in Tuscaloosa or, or anywhere for that matter. Incidents like this raise questions with some students on ways to improve safety in college towns. We as a campus and state need to look into how we can protect ourselves better. I mean, I, it didn't make me feel less safe, but it definitely made me think about trying to make campuses more safe in general. And parents believe with personal awareness comes personal responsibility. I think that they maybe will think a little bit more wisely about some of those choices and how they, um, they get involved in those choices. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Travis Leader, WVUA News. Now to a story of another triple homicide. A judge in Haneyville has ordered DeAndre Marquise Lee held on a $3 million bond for the shooting deaths of nine-year-old twins and their 73-year-old babysitter. Lee appeared this afternoon before Loudons County District Judge Adrian Johnson. Johnson appointed Haneyville attorney Jerry Thornton to represent Lee. The judge said Lee would not enter a plea until after the case is heard by a grand jury, possibly early next year. Johnson set a hearing for okay. June 19th to consider a request by District Attorney Charlotte Tesmer that Lee's $10,000 bond on an earlier charge be revoked. On your home team education watch tonight, who will be the next University of Alabama president? Trustees met Monday to discuss possible options. No specific names have been discussed, including former provost and current interim president, Dr. Judy Bonner. The position opened after the board announced Dr. Robert Witt would take over as the UA Chancellor. UA Systems' Kelly Reinhardt says even though no names are discussed yet, they prefer a certain type of candidate. There are no names that have surfaced um, and at all. Um, one of the things that, that, that has been talked about a lot is the, um, the preference for having a sitting presidential experience. Reinhardt says the next step is to have discussions with faculty, staff, community leaders, and students. She also cautions to have patience. There are many steps the board must take to find a new president, which Reinhardt says is a more lengthened process compared to other open positions. The Tuscaloosa County School Board Superintendent Search is starting from scratch. They took no action tonight regarding the candidates they interviewed last week. This means the county will go back to the drawing board and continue talks with their search firm. The school board had continued to praise interim superintendent Dan Butler during his tenure. Butler may have to extend his service beyond the 180 days while the search continues. Board member Mark Nelson says he's completely okay with that. I think the board has the luxury with him here of being able to take this step back and see what we need to do and he's willing to stay uh, in that position you know as long as we can uh, keep him there and uh, allow us to do what we need to do from the standpoint of due diligence to find the right permanent superintendent. Butler says he is not interested in the permanent position if offered the job. He does say he is honored to work at the Tuscaloosa County Schools in his current position. Butler came out of retirement to accept the interim job. Northport leaders discuss the long-term future of their city today. The Northport Advisory Council met this afternoon to discuss a new five-year plan for the retail and economic development of the city. The plan includes bringing in new shopping boutiques, sit-down restaurants, and other major chain stores. Mayor Bobby Herndon says as new businesses move in, many job opportunities will follow. With more businesses coming to Northport, we see more industry calling us also because if we have quality of life things in our city, they like to locate their industry here too. So a lot of things that we're working on and uh, hope it's all going to come to fruition. And Mayor Herndon says the council has plans of revitalizing the riverfront and parts of Highway 82. Well, today marks the 49th year since a major moment.